one of the things that a lot of times people ask us questions and they say, but surely CO2, for example, is good, good for plants and therefore good for food. And that's actually true. CO2 is a, a fundamental thing that plants use to photosynthesize and produce our food, and it's the basis of our food chain. What people often, what most people don't realise though, is when you when you grow a plant at, at higher CO2, and CO2 is is appreciably being measured at higher and higher levels, um, they do grow faster, they grow bigger, they actually though become less nutritious because as they get bigger and grow faster, they take up less nitrogen proportionately to the amount of carbon in the tissues. And nitrogen is what you use, plants use to build protein. So as plants grow at higher and higher CO2, they actually become less nutritious in terms of protein. So apart from, you know, CO2 will have an impact on our food security via its impacts on climate. CO2 will also have a direct impact on the quality of the food we eat. And whilst you're there, Leslie, what about other ecosystems? Um, yeah, I've been researching the impacts of climate change on ecosystems and species for about the last 20 years. And one of the things that we're most concerned about is the impact of climate change on natural systems because they've got probably the least ability to adapt quickly enough. Um, species do evolve, um, but they evolve very slowly. It takes about a million years to make a new species, and we don't have that long for most species to adjust. So uh, it's the IPCC estimated that with about um, two to three degrees above pre-industrial levels of warming, we may be committing um, between about 30 and 50 percent of global biodiversity to increased risk of extinction. Now, we're, we're already at nearly a degree towards that um, goal, if you like to call it a goal. Um, so we're, we're very concerned. And places like the Great Barrier Reef, places like our Alpine region, Kakadu National Park, they will be the first to suffer really major changes. And we're already seeing species responding very, very sensitively to climate change. Examples? Well, for example, what we would expect is as the climate zones shift, we expect species that can move, you know, they can swim or fly, to move with the climate zones to stay in their preferred climate zone that they're in now. And what we're actually seeing is a lot of species doing that. So in Australia, we're seeing species like birds move, uh, move further and further south. We're seeing lots of marine species move south. We're seeing species move up mountains. We're seeing lots of differences in the, the timing of life cycles compared to, you know, spring is being sprung much earlier than it used to be. Um, so we know that even with um, fractions of degree of warming per decade, the natural ecosystems are responding very, very sensitively. Thank you. Gentlemen here.